Welcome. This is now episode five. That's right, number five. Hello. Number six, maybe seven, will be happening <laughs> right after this. We don't know how long this is going to go, but this is Up the Waterfall, the Epcot episode mm. six. Possibly. There's going to be at least two, Probably, I feel like. I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be, and I'm in my Epcot rain jacket i don't know if this is supposed to be a raincoat futuristic I like very it. iridescent from the d23 expo that you picked up for me who knows if i'll ever wear it out in public but you know it's I really a fun. like this logo here yes i couldn't not tell you to get it um i'm gonna take <laughs> it off now though because it's very <laughs> noisy yes and uh you know christian won't be happy with that editing process so hopefully you can not hear it you want me to get rid of it completely all right we'll do that <laughs> what else are you sporting? Uh, I'm also wearing my original Epcot Center painter's cap, Ooh. which I, this is actually not my original one. My original one, <laughs> I ruined. Uh, I feel like, I can't remember the story of that. I'm too old. But anyway, I got this on eBay, but it's the same, the same style. There I'm, are photos I'm of you wear wearing it. your original hat from there the 80s are, which you can find on xanaland.com that's right um i feel like i tried to wash my original one and these colors if you know the hat they bleed. the logo bled a lot yes Even but i wore this to... a lot there's many pictures of me <laughs> in my mom's photo albums and i always had my hair in a ponytail and you know it was a fun fun that's time right. and when i wasn't wearing my michael jackson painter's cap that's what i was wearing and we both also are wearing a fun Epcot Center yes, shirt. This is another eBay purchase. Um, as everyone knows, Epcot opened in 1982. Yep. But this is the first year I visited was 83. So when I saw this on eBay, mm -hmm. and they're on there fairly often. I don't know where <laughs> people are getting them, but I've seen them quite a few times. Mine was 84, by the way. So Yeah, they sell those on eBay, too. So you should get yourself a mm. 1984 okay. Epcot shirt. Alrighty. Um, anyway... Back to the topic at hand, we are going to be discussing Epcot, which kind of is the reason I started blogging to begin with. Uh, definitely why I wanted to do a podcast was the history of Epcot, the history of Walt Disney World in general, and the history of Disneyland once I learned about that, yes. which wasn't too long <laughs> ago for me, but you know, I caught up, I think. Um, so we're going to do this a little bit more personally because there's certainly a million places out there that you can find a, about the history of Epcot Center, uh, right. opening day things when it was being built. There's endless videos on, yeah. on YouTube that you can go there's see. There's books out there, which we'll get into yeah. some of those These are very in the future. Dear, near and dear to my heart, so yes. yes. But what we wanted to do was kind of approach it from a more personal level. And in the process, you know, eventually we're going to do an episode that talks about us and who we are and where <laughs> we came from and how we got into Disney. Um, because I think that's important, too. Yeah. As far as, you know. But I would say for both of us, Epcot Center was a big part of, yes, of who we are. Definitely. So that's why we wanted to do this. And we kind of just wanted to go into how we learned of and researched perhaps in your case and <laughs> first visited Epcot and hopefully that resonates with people and you know we can uh, reminisce along the way yeah as I like to say I'm a professional nostalgic because <laughs> this is where I live most of the time oh, yes. is in this portion of That's my right. personal history um, but jumping right in this was I just want to show this show and tell thing. We're gonna, we're going to do a, another thing later that's showing all the books we're going to talk yeah, about during this. There are many. Just because we don't want this to be a seventeen-hour episode. <laughs> um, but for me personally, this was the first Disney book I got. Which, if oh. you're only listening to the audio, is "The Magic of Disneyland and Walt Disney World" by Valerie Childs. It's a very picture-heavy book. Yes, and I was probably seven or eight when i got it oh, i don't wow. know when this was published you probably do off the I, top of your head i'm not i don't remember i think it i mean it was definitely before epcot came out so yes there are there's no epcot imagery in this one uh, there's no like publication date anyway 
a friend of the family gave this to me and it was something that I just loved pouring through and seeing because I had been to Walt Disney World at that point in time. Um, there's even some original. This was in the book when that I got is it. That is amazing. There are which have actual Mickey balloons the with the Mickey ears. From Walt Disney World. I don't know where um, he got phenomenal. these from when he there's gave a, me this book, but I've just a, always kept them in there. A yellow and a blue one, and they're kind of stuck to the pages. Yeah. And <laughs> so for me, I would spend hours looking through this book and seeing the things like from Disneyland with right. the different monorail style and the Matterhorn was always fascinating like this page right here that has the whatever that That's ship is the, That's the captain the, hooks the chicken of, chicken the, sea. of the sea thing captain hook pirate the ship skyway yeah. and the matterhorn i was always fascinated with that but you know that's another disneyland episode yes so which will be another that yeah. kind of built up walt disney world along with going there of course as a very special <clears throat> place for me and really built up the fandom my, my family wasn't like huge disney people so it wasn't you know, like I grew up with it, but I, I kind just, of did it, by it default. It hits a person's soul. Uh, yeah. You know, it, you, it stuck with you. Yeah. Personally. And, and, and myself, of course. I forgot to check my hair after I turned that hat off. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in 1982, I guess, we as a family were planning a big trip driving from mm. Sharon, Massachusetts, which is where I lived at the time. Wow. Um, outside of Boston, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> <laughs> and we were going to drive down to Orlando and Walt Disney World. It's quite a drive. It is. And we were going to stop at various historical places along the way because my mother believed in um, educational vacation things. So, <laughs> And it was fun. I'm super glad I did it because I well, uh, some of these places I haven't been back to since there's then. There's tons of fun things along yeah. the way. So we stopped at um, like Philadelphia and Baltimore. And did you go to Colonial Williamsburg? Um, I forget if we did that. To, uh, we did some things on the way down and some things on the way up. Okay. So it's kind of a blur, but we definitely did visit Colonial Williamsburg at some point in time. Um, and then of course, there's not much historical once you leave the Virginia area and go down. So right. of course, from that point on, it was just south of the border that we stopped at. <laughs> Various um, roadside attractions. Yes. <clears throat> so anyway, we had the Steve Birnbaum guidebooks. Which we both uh, started ours in '84. Looks like mine yeah, actually has seen like a little worse for the wear. We had uh, another one. They used to have a white <laughs> covered in there. Was it later that? Uh, they had it was white later covered? that. Okay. They were white. Yeah. So I don't know if this was my first one or not. Uh, there might be another one in a box somewhere. This is absolutely my first one here. But um, the back cover is completely separated. But look. Well, yeah. It's a giant Mine's photo in better of condition than Spaceship yours. Earth. But I probably, I mean, you probably read it a lot. I read, uh, yes, many, <laughs> many times. <laughs> but I did read this from cover to cover. And absolutely. the way, I mean, this was unheard of, I guess, at the time to have this sort of it listed everything. It, yeah, it was incredibly detailed. It described all of the things. So as a, you know, seven or eight-year-old or nine-year-old, um, this was like my Bible. And this, I wanted to do everything that I read about in here. And, and there was a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the Walt Disney World Village, the Epcot oh, Center yeah. sections were, of course, uh, seeing the uh, future world stuff with and hearing about imagination I knew right away that I was going to love that so <laughs> as, as a side note when we were planning this trip my parents were also in the course of um, remodeling their little half bath outside of their bedroom <laughs> so there was and that was the only bathroom downstairs in our house this was like an old colonial house so we had ripped off all the wallpaper by we, I mean, you know, my parents. I really didn't have much to do with it at that time. And for some reason, I guess we had had a yard sale, so we had these gigantic markers. And we, I had drawn, I asked for permission, and they said it was okay because we were going to be putting new wallpaper on. So I had drawn on the walls like a Mickey head with a countdown <laughs> to this 1983 trip oh, that great. we had. And I made like a big calendar, and I was crossing off the things every day, which was weird that it was in a bathroom, but, you know. And this book was also do. in the bathroom. And that's <laughs> 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 so it was a very big deal at the time. And I think, um, you know, we'll probably go over this more, but 
it was definitely obviously a different time very much so it was a different way of vacationing um advertising was different marketing was different so I mean, I don't remember seeing any advertisements or all of those like promotional videos that we were just watching some in in preparation of this. I don't remember seeing any of those. I don't remember on any TV all, or anything, but they existed um, because they were promoting it. But as children, both of us, we just kind of learned about it because that's where our interests mm -hmm. somehow ended up. That's right. And so, yeah, how did you end up? Well, visiting the first time. Well, um, I was born and raised in Southern California, so I was a Disneyland guy. But uh, when I was uh, at on right around my twelfth birthday in eighty two, uh, we moved to Texas. So I left Orange County, California, and moved to Texas. And there's kind of a that's a a Disney free zone, kind <laughs> of a, right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was going through a lot of Disney um, withdrawal. Withdrawal, yes. <laughs> um, but I had I had heard of Disney World, but I had really just thought it was Disneyland, but bigger, mm. meaning it was just the single park, but everything was just more spread out. I really didn't know all of the details about how it was you know, twenty seven thousand acres, forty three square miles, and and all of that, because um, I just never really looked into it. But uh, I started hearing about this new thing called Epcot, and um, I was just very intrigued by it. Um, I think I'd seen it in various newspaper articles and things like that, and then that actually led to me getting this, which was the uh, the Walt Disney's Epcot Center book, Creating the New World of Tomorrow, which is, I mean, this was just an amazing book because it is a full-on coffee table book about an amazing theme park which is completely different than any other kind of thing that we've known before and so I had to learn all of my things about Epcot from Texas <laughs> nowhere uh, near a Disney park and so everywhere I looked I tried to find either a copy of this book or, or any more information I could whether it be a newspaper article or a magazine article like in the library trying to f find as much as I could about Epcot like I never actually saw the um, the opening of Epcot um, special that yeah, was no, on television I didn't either. even though it was part of the Sunday night uh, thing hmm. that they that they did I guess I just wasn't completely in tune with all of that yeah but uh, I actually wrote into Disney when I was planning our family vacation um, and they actually sent me a, a little magazine brochure, a probably about 16. Guide. Yeah, it was called Vacation Guide. It, and it was everything about Disney World, but it, because Epcot was so new, it included several pages just on Epcot Center. And I just poured over each and every one of the pictures, just examining it. I, one thing in particular I remember, they actually showed a picture of the land boat ride. And you could see the the you know the dome. the dome that it went through. And since I didn't really have any idea where things were, I actually thought that that was in space. Yeah, Earth. no, I remember thinking <laughs> that too because there back then, you know, when you saw a dome, you're like, oh, that must be the same thing. Exactly. You didn't understand that. So yeah. I was sure somehow <laughs> that boat rides in that giant ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> then I quickly you know poured over every article within that, and I figured. It was not, and that's actually when I was gifted this book for uh, Christmas, I believe in 19, Christmas of 82, huh. I was given this book, and so then I just read this cover to cover, and this is just an amazing book. It goes through each and every one of the pavilions, and all about the history of and making of all of those, and I just could not get enough. And this is actually what also started me going down the rabbit hole of Disney books, which we'll <laughs> get to it. Yes. More so, I'm sure, in future episodes. But um, so that started me in actually personally planning a Disney vacation for our family. Yeah. And uh, I didn't go until the summer of 84. And that's that was my first trip to Disney World. And uh, I was the one that planned it all. And it was a seven-day trip where we just went to the two parks. We actually ended up getting a five-day park hopper. And Epcot was the first park that I had ever been to outside of Disneyland. We actually went to wow. Epcot first hmm. before the Magic Kingdom. And uh, it was great. We had one day for the uh, the marketplace. And I just 
fell in love with the place. And so then I decided then and there that I would be moving out here <laughs> uh, when I got old enough to do so. And that's what led me to be here. Hmm. That's so sort of go. Uh, the same thing kind of happened to my family, too. They had decided after that trip that we were going to leave Massachusetts and New England and move to my dad had actually grown up in Ocala, Florida, which is like okay, 75 right. miles west, northwest, northwest <laughs> of uh, Orlando. And I still have family there. And um, so, yeah, he was in the restaurant business my whole life growing up. And my mother was a former professional ballerina Ooh. who had a ballet school where we lived in Sharon, Massachusetts. And they both decided we're going to give up what we have been doing she's going to sell her school we're going <laughs> to sell our house and we're oh going to move to Ocala wow. and my sister and brother are like nine and ten years older than me so they were living their own lives at that point <laughs> and did not come with us so I sort of became an only child at that point in Ocala um, which was similar to you moving to Texas as far as like being very different it was like a huge culture shock for oh, me yeah. and ocala has certainly changed over the years since i was there in 84 um or 85 i can't remember when we exactly moved there but that w that's a great time though yeah right and in the history of disney yeah Epcot, it was so. you know right in in the middle of the 80s and you know going to the mall all the time and it was fun. So it, for me to be able to, and also they would close, we opened an ice cream store. Sorry, I forgot about that. This is all in my blog. <laughs> I forget what I'm talking about. What was the name of this ice cream me. store? It was named after me. It was Susanna's Sweet Shop <laughs> uh -huh. on Silver Springs Boulevard in Ocala, which there is like no history of anywhere. <laughs> now it's it's like a Shoney's parking lot, I think. Oh, that's too bad. Um, sadly. But I do have, you know, advertisement clippings from our Ocala Star banner ads that we had. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's a, a recording of me doing a radio commercial <laughs> for it where some other guy had to pretend to be my dad. It was very weird. Anyway, that's another <laughs> whole story. Um, but we they closed the restaurant, the ice cream shop on Mondays. So I would be taken out of school. Well, I'm sure you were sick. A most few Mondays, Mondays right? uh, out of the a month. And we would drive to to go to Epcot. And from that point in my life, Epcot became like the place that we would go. Like I oh, yeah. really didn't visit Magic Kingdom that much in that time of my life because that's very interesting. I know to me that was like, oh, that's all kitty stuff. Cause also I wasn't like a super roller coaster person. So I didn't go for Space Mountain or anything like that. We um, would still go there. The, but Epcot there was, was just really Space Mountain it. and Big Thunder Mountain yeah. Railroad as far as roller coasters. So I'm just saying like that wasn't enough for me to say like, we need to go to Magic Kingdom. We that's just went to Epcot Plus, because I mean Epcot was just yeah, so uh, we would every, all of the concepts were we so would new go to there us. just to you know have dinner and or lunch however long we stayed there and we have just so many amazing memories of doing that and riding the omnibus around World Showcase <laughs> and um, I remember when we could do that yeah that was a good time so and I've talked about this in my I believe my love letter to Epcot. On Which is a blog. great, great blog post. If any of you have not gone there, we'll you should go to xanaland.com and check that out. Because it really is, it talks about you and your you know, love yeah. of I mean, original Epcot it's, Center. It's so strange if you stand outside yourself and think about how how much that affected me as a person and so many of us as yeah. people and how there's this I mean that's the reason like Disney Twitter and all of these blogs and vlogs and everything exist for the most part some of them are you know doing different things nowadays but I think it it stirred something in us that really made us different people and oh, gave yeah. us hope for the future and it was something where you know Magic Kingdom was tying in to Disney um animated features and things like that of course or original concepts that were still in the realm of fantasy um and not something that you could relate to everyday life right whereas epcot was just completely unique and it wasn't you know the community that walt had originally envisioned of course but it was a way to show you what could happen in the future 
mm-hmm. but it was still entertaining. It wasn't, I mean, when people, Very much like so. my classmates in Ocala, you know, some of them used to say, oh, Epcot's boring. I still, I never I, understood I, that. That makes no sense to me. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just, you know, there's something different for everyone, but a lot of us were certainly very affected by um, the alluring nature of Epcot. And that's what I was starting to say about the blog post. What It started really just right when you walked in the gate, actually before, because we would drive up and it would we would always, you know, play a game of who saw Spaceship <laughs> Earth first when you're driving around um, with those trees and everything. And you would be parking in, you know, things that would be amaze or imagine, right. and, you know, you would know like this is something unique and special. And then the minute you walked in, you would hear the original main entrance the music, medley. the medley, yes, which is just so it, it's moving, stirred. it's so stirring, yeah. And, and just, I mean, I could just, I don't know, I, I don't have the words to put in to you know how amazing and special that and also hearing it in the entrance area it's just kind of <clears throat> prepared you for right. the amazing day that you were yeah, going because to be having it's it's epic the the music yeah. was epic and walking in and seeing spaceship earth which still to this day even though Ep- epcot has changed so much over the years but walking in and seeing that gigantic geodesic dome. It's not is, something that you see. Every, no. I mean, we, I mean, you know, we, we kind of do. Yeah. Now, but, but it still it's amazes so, you every day. It, and it's or every and time the you're fact there. that it's full and complete and you can walk right under it. Yeah. It's so unique yeah. and amazing to see. And, and you, can, you can see it from very, very far away, many, many miles away to see it and just kind of be able to, oh, that giant thing that kind of represents this whole park and you can walk right under it. Mm -hmm. That's still amazing. Yeah. And I think what Epcot, the original Epcot Center did so well was combine all of the different elements of, you know, a theme park or a space that made you want to be there. Like right now, Epcot, I mean, it's going under a lot of changes. A lot of changes. But (laughs) for a while now, it's been mostly concrete and yes there's been a couple of fountains but they certainly weren't how they originally looked no. there was a lot more water originally so much water so combining <laughs> and you know landscaping and trees and such so walking in and having the music all around you and seeing the moving fountain of the water which at night would light up with different mm-hmm. colors and seeing spaceship earth light up at night was yeah. like those colors were just iconic after a while i mean instantly and having the trees around you and everywhere you went this is what i love about the music so much the attraction the original attractions you could hear their themes throughout the background music of the park like it was all intertwined all of the different pavilions worked together and i don't think it's been that harmonious yeah, and, since you know. And they did that opened. in different places because if you were to go to the the World Showcase Promenade, it actually had all of the different country right. themes um, playing in you know that would go back and forth from mm-hmm. each other. And then you in the Future World area, they would do those themes. Yeah. And the music of Epcot Center is literally its own thing. That's just f- so fascinating. Yeah, they've had so many amazing both songs for uh, the different attractions, but also just the kind of the instrumental theme music for each one. Yeah, the music itself is so memorable and so it it just fits perfectly. And then... And that's why they introduced that the the album of the official album of Epcot Center. On that first trip in 1983. I mean, we got that album as well and I would just listen to it on repeat. Um... But see, and the songs within the attractions with words were so simple and catchy, but they weren't like dumb little no, made up, <laughs> you know, Disney songs. They weren't even, I mean, no offense to the Sherman Brothers, but they weren't because they did One Little Spark. So it's fine. Everything's fine. Don't don't yell <laughs> at me, anyone. But like s- Small World, people always make fun of the fact that like, oh, God, that song's going to be stuck in my head. These songs got stuck in my head, too, but it, I loved it. It was awesome. Yes. Yeah. So... It really was just an amazing overall sensory experience when you first got there. And I mean, I'm not sure how, like, (laughs) it's very difficult to 
divide how we want to even cover all of this. Yeah, I'm but not sure how to, to how to go about doing that. I mean, we can just start at the beginning and I guess talk about yeah. Spaceship Earth. Sure. Quickly. We can go through each one quickly because I think at some point in time. But what about the parking lot? No, <laughs> I already talked about the parking lot as much. I mean, even the trams were fun. The also, trams were And fun. the monorail. Honestly, yes, the monorail was fun because it was fun to take the monorail all the way from ticket and transportation because it gave you a preview. Yeah. They could have, they could have done it so that you would stop there f- first and let right. you out but no they actually gave you a preview loop they actually went through the park mm-hmm. for quite a you know it still goes there uh, yeah. through quite a ways and you, takes you pretty deep into the park where yeah. you can certainly see all of world showcase mm-hmm. and also all of the different pavilions around future world and then it dropped you off okay here's a fun tease now have yeah. fun and for some of the things you could see you know how crowded it was like oh there's a line outside yeah. of <laughs> imagination which doesn't happen nowadays but you know <laughs> back no then. there are yeah there are there's certainly photographic proof of yeah. lines you know pouring out of the land all the way out oh yeah for sure and to the communicor buildings so. and world of motion i always used to love and uh, i loved World yes. of, I mean, we'll get to World of Motion, but like <laughs> going up on the little the curved outer portion, yeah, and yes. seeing, I, I can't imagine how many photos I took of, and then you sometimes there would be a monorail going by, right? Oh, yes. so if you can get the monorail get and lucky. Spaceship Earth, good times. Anyway, Spaceship <sighs> Earth, um, I don't have too many specific memories of the original it was walter cronkite was the original walter cronkite was not the original there See, was actually one before then who, who was just <laughs> he, i don't recall his name mm-hmm. i know i meant i know that they thought it was this one guy and then they found out oh it's not him it's this other uh, guy oh yeah i do remember hearing that recently that they but they actually got changed out to walter cronkite i believe even before my first visit hmm. in 84 okay so but that might have been the first one i heard then because I was in it's most likely. July or August of 83 was my first I'm not visit. sure of the exact time of when they changed that out. So it's very possible that my first visit was the pre-Walter Cronkite one. But Was it Lawrence Dobkin? It possibly is. That, I believe, is the new name because I remember they had mm. said, oh, it's this other guy. And then they found out, oh, wait, it's not. Hmm. That's not the name I remembered, but it, there, there were two names. Interesting. But to me, Walter Cronkite yeah. version was the ultimate version because he was certainly the authority of figure in, in news. Yeah. And he has a, just a wonderful, wonderful voice. I preferred him in the backstage animation tour when he was with Robin Williams. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> but that's another episode. Yes. Um, but I mean, I know a lot of people really are fond of the Jeremy Irons Yeah, I was just well. going to say, that's actually my preferred one because of Tomorrow's Child. I have the other original person. What's that? It was Vic Perrin. Vic Perrin is the Uh, name that I remember. That was who they thought it was for so long. I think that's what they thought it was initially. Yeah, and now it's that other guy. Now they think it's Lawrence Dobkin. Lawrence Dobkin. Hey, if you're out there. there, But I think what's more important (laughs) is the the date of the changeover, or even the year. Do you want to know that? Yes, please. Uh... (laughs) Walter Cronkite was started in 1986. 86, 86. Okay. So that means my first uh, trip and your first trip, it was not Vic Perrin, but this other fellow. Lawrence but uh, somebody who's not a well-known name. That's so weird that you have Walter. I mean, I have Walter Cronkite in my head as the original. Yeah, he was not the I original. I was already. I think by. 86 we were we only were in ocala for two years so we were like already moving yeah. to virginia and didn't visit as much during yeah, that. my second trip was in 87 so a lot of a lot of uh, changes happened even between 84 and 87 including <laughs> including that when was jeremy irons that was 90 something 94 94 so that was the only in my opinion good part of epcot 94 <laughs> i know some people yes. you know still preferred the original narration but I liked the Jeremy Irons one, and I, did I too. loved "Tomorrow's Child." is truly one of my favorite Epcot songs, even one. though it's not an original. I That's just right. love. I mean, maybe because you know I had children, but I I liked <laughs> it even before then, and I just love the sentiment of it. And I, f- I think that's part of why we all love Epcot so much is the messaging back then was so authentic and so full of hope and 
I think it inspired a lot of people to do great things when they grew up. Oh, yeah. And I'm, cer- I'm sure, you know, many of the Imagineers now were original Epcot Center fans. I'm certain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we know a couple. Um, but I would say one of the cool things about Spaceship Earth in particular, if you, if you look at this giant 180-foot-tall geodesic sphere, it's to look at it and know, hey, I'm actually going in there. And I'm going to be twisting around Mm -hmm. all the way up to the top. And I'll literally be inside of that ball looking up at the the ceiling, seeing the earth and the stars, and then winding down the middle at a a much more uh, sharp angle. Yeah. To me, that was fascinating. Yeah, that was one of the great parts was that your time machine vehicle is now rotating backwards. That's right. And (laughs) to be able to just sit back. And really, and it would be at a very sharp angle, yeah. just going all the way down. I know that that's always been kind of a constant struggle with Spaceship Earth is is to make that uh, the descent as entertaining as mm-hmm. as the ascent. <laughs> uh, they've always that's kind of been troubling, but I know the the Jeremy Irons version. They certainly had some amazing things. Yeah, that there was when they had the, those little the Pepper's Ghost effects yeah. and, and things like that. That was a fun time, but and now it is nothing. But it will be updated soon. Probably. But just to see the history of communications, and yes, there was kind of that abrupt thing from going into the, from the faraway past into, okay, now this is now the current times. We, at the yeah. one point when you go from the Leonardo da Vinci, or I'm sorry, Michelangelo painting the ceiling to the printing to the giant uh, newspaper yeah. And I think that's what another thing that Epcot Center originally did so well was honor the history and look to the future and all of the attractions there was a here's where we've come from and here's where we're going and that is a very common theme in fact absolutely with horizons world of motion was it epcot the spaceship earth was where have we come from where are we going that narration or was that world of motion i believe that was uh, spaceship earth spaceship earth yeah yes those you know i mean that's what they weren't just like hey here's the future kids you know like everything's going to be spaceships and (laughs) hover cars they said like look at how far we've come and look at how much we have learned from and now here's what can be yeah um so so it was Mm. a fun time and of course when you exited the ride there was earth station earth station which which was was just amazing i loved it it's hard to pick something that you wish they would go back to the original, like just one thing. But I sure wish they would bring this back there because really it was just w- there really wasn't much to it. No, but, but it, it was, was still like amazing because a breezeway thing. It was, it was open to yeah, the it was outside. Open, definitely got a good f- feel. But there were a couple of kind of guest relations kind of desks there. You can get information, and of course, on the far side there would be all of those world key kiosks yes. where you could make dining reservations or just find out fun facts about Epcot yeah. Center. Yeah. And then of course also screens. above that was the giant, uh, yes. the kind of the movie that montage that would be constantly playing, showing you all of the different pavilions and you know both the countries and World Showcase and all of the pavilions in Future World. And, and they were done in such a, a fun little... Fun and whimsical. Pixelated yes. animation, yes. which, I mean, I don't know if that was just the highest technology at the time for those screens, <laughs> but it was fun, and it made you be, want to go to those yeah. places. And so it, it did cycle through pretty quick, um, but... It was just fun to see. And I think the background music was still playing oh, yeah. in there at that time, right? Mm-hmm. I used to, we would always, when we went there, go and make a reservation like right then, either ah. for dinner or, you know, a late lunch or something We did like not that. have that luxury to uh, enjoy the the full <laughs> service restaurants there, but that's okay. But anyway, the, the post show for, had a lot more kids. for the Bell Systems, which is a- actually opened as Bell Systems before AT&T, kind of that whole merger took place right in the 1983 time frame. But anyway, the, the post show for that was not there in our station, but it was in the, the closest wing of Communicore East. Mm. So if you had taken a right out of Earth Station and gone straight into the Communicore building, where that was, was the post show, Mm. if you will. You know, so one of the exhibits of Communicore was kind of the post show of Spaceship Earth. Yeah. So there you go. Fun Mm. times. And 
I don't, I mean, there was also a little like benches to sit down in there, wasn't there, to watch the screens? Was there yeah. a sitting, sitting I, area? I, I can't remember. Speci- Actually, I yes, like there, the, was. there definitely were benches. Yes. So you can watch a Martin's vid and find out. Um, <laughs> and I, I need to correct myself. That was Communicore West. Oh, okay. That that was in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's funny that you got confused because I was saying maybe we'll cover Future World East or what. I don't remember which one is. I uh, could never. That was West. It's yes. It's facing Spaceship Earth from World Showcase is East or West. Front, okay, so facing Spaceship Earth from where? From World Showcase. From like World you're Showcase, the you're, park. Lo- you're looking straight north. Okay, that so point. that's west and that's yeah. east. Okay, so we were... <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was actually unique because both of the, the previous Disney parks that had opened up by that point, which is the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland, both of them, you were looking, as you're going up Main Street, you're looking due north. Yeah. So this was a, a complete that's opposite. That's why I can never remember it. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I mean, I just, I never called them like Communicore East or West. We just like went in them. But I, I will say if if we can continue what you had gone, what you'd spoken about before with kind of the, the fountains mm. and waterways of the future world area, they definitely themed them in, in a way, both the, this is the part on the opposite sides of the Communicore building. So in front of each of the pavilions, they had a completely different kind of a theme if you remember the the parts on the west side which is where journey into imagination the living seas and the land are are very they're very uh, flowy and there's a lot of water yes and things like that whereas the other sides which is more of the is it right brain or left brain i can't are more straight lines Mm. no water and very uh unique angles and the walkways are, are that are done that way. Hmm. And actually that that whole fact really got me intrigued about the landscape architecture of Epcot to the point of making me want to be become a landscape architect. Wow. And so when I actually got to it college was in your blood. Yeah. I had to choose between getting a degree in accounting, which was to me safer, or becoming <laughs> a landscape architect. And I oh, think well, I made if the I'd wrong known choice. You back then <laughs> you probably would have been a landscape architect. Yes. But it was, but it was due to Epcot. <laughs> yeah. That that got that through. I didn't even know that. This is why I have you around yeah. because I didn't know those facts, and I. That's why part of why I wanted to do this sort of thing is there's so many things out there that are just like you know facts and figures on Epcot, which I know you know all of those things, and that's why I, I know love you. you. <laughs> but I think a combination of both of those oh, is, yes. is a good thing. So yeah, that was a cool fact. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so anyway, we should go to one of the sides. And I'm just thinking if we looked at our guidebook here, which way should we go? Oh, I love these colors and this design so Vote much. Now in the comments <laughs> <laughs> Vote now on your seat. I think we should go this side. Okay, Universe of Energy? Yeah. Well, let me jump in and say back in the day, that was not my favorite ride. I was a oh. little scaredy cat, and I did not like the scary dinosaurs. I can understand being scared of the dinosaurs, but to, if you had said it bored me, no. Uh, well, the opening we would have to reconsider some things. Film may have been a little dry. No, but I did still enjoy it because I loved the ride system even back then I appreciated that I loved the smell of when you went through the dinosaurs that's like the Florida smell which when we moved to Ocala and I would go to school early in the mornings that was that same smell (laughs) that like sort of you know foggy swampy Florida smell and they really captured that perfectly and well let's leave ET out of it but I mean (laughs) the unique thing about universe of energy and well first off the fact that it's got all of those photovoltaic cells on the roof of the building that actually powered the vehicles that you will be riding through to me that was just fascinating yeah, it was and it was a, a such a fun angular building with you know so provocative and that it had a nice little fountain out yeah, front the, the mirror fountain and front with all the little fountain. tiles yeah. on the exterior it was just and the tile mosaic when you first walked in oh it yeah. had the countdown to the next show the countdown which was sunk into the actual wall amazing yeah and I have photos of that from the last day oh yeah and then of course it's unique uh, the the sun 
logo or the icon, yes. if you will. But then the the first pre-show theater was just very fascinating and fun. Do you even remember the kind of the little? I, there's a name for them, the block. Uh, it had uh, like the a, screens with the yeah the screens with the rotating oh, uh, blocks yeah. where they would be able to very I uniquely remember that. Uh, project yeah. either animation or live action mm -hmm. onto each of the blocks and be able to have different grids and zones. I am obsessed with that, that design. Yeah, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so they would be able to, and so these blocks would would kind of rotate either like I think they were in triangular forms on mm -hmm. on the vertical axis and so you would either be able to project something on a flat surface or on an angle oh, when it rotated yeah. only just part of the way so you so some of them would be on just like on the side of the triangle yeah. if you will and this is very technical and I <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about you know you know exactly what I'm talking about but those that are not familiar with this screen uh, it, it's essentially if you remember Ellen's energy adventure it's that pre-show area where she would talk with Bill Nye but instead of those five flat screens they would have I think it was like a hundred blocks across and maybe five wow. blocks high but each one ten feet across yeah that might be the next theater which is right after you board your vehicles I I'm, I don't have my glasses on it's 100 rotating prism shaped flip screen Yes. So there you go. And what's the name of Very those? Cool. It starts with E, I believe. Uh, they were invented by the Czech film director Emil Radok. Radok. Okay. So I don't know where I got the E from, but I guess maybe from energy. Name? But the Radok blocks <laughs> is what they were. It was called the Radok Block Theater, if you oh, will. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I, like I said, I didn't go on it too 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 often so i kind of blocked that up but i do remember it now that you but said that. i think one of the other reasons that a lot of people were very intimidated by universe of energy as a whole is it's a singular attraction that if you wrote it in its entirety could take anywhere between 20 25 30 minutes in length well and so, yeah i mean that didn't scare me off because i liked the air conditioning and the sitting down right. aspect of it but i mean i know that today's Right. People do not have the uh, our the, attention the patience, spans have been uh, extremely shortened. Yes, I loved longer things like that, and no, I, I relished it, and especially that part when uh, you would get in your vehicles, if you will, and watch. A, it was a very unique animated film about kind of the history of uh, fossil fuels and all that, but then it kind of got to the primordial soup <laughs> that became hmm dinosaurs yeah. the age of dinosaurs and so the screen would lift and you would essentially the the giant uh, platform that you were on would rotate and theater, you'd yeah. essentially ride on sunshine through the one of the walls and into the the greatest part of the attraction was the dinosaurs and just being able to see all of these audio animatronic dinosaurs and I certainly remember you know, being a Disneyland guy, yeah. you know, the dinosaurs that you would ride through uh, on Primeval World on the, the, the Disneyland Railroad. And so, you know, so it would, a lot of that came from that, which it itself came from Fantasia, you know, from the one, the Rite of Springs section of Fantasia, mm -hmm. if you think about that and kind of the origins of that. Yes. Uh, but... <laughs> That was just a fascinating thing to see. And yeah. certainly the, the highlight of that attraction was being able to ride through that and see all those fun dinosaurs. Uh, the effort and the technology for the time was just mind-boggling. And I think, oh yeah, I don't know, that's part of what's so sad about <laughs> how things have been let go and changed. Is I think they definitely could have improved on all of the original things to keep them up to date and keep these amazing pieces of technology oh, yeah. and workmanship and you know theater at the end of the day working so. yeah i mean and if you think about just this attraction universe of energy as a whole you would have that pre-show theater 
the and then after you got onto the vehicles there was a another theater where they would you know show you that movie mm -hmm. and then you went through the attraction and then they would show another movie <laughs> in a in a yes. separate theater mm -hmm. and then there was essentially a fifth show when you transferred from that last theater back to the original theater it would be kind of a, like a laser show during the the song of universe wow. of energy I blocked that out. Yeah. And so it's essentially, if you will, the whole experience is kind of like five shows all in one, if you think about it that way. That's amazing. I'm yeah. definitely going to have to watch and the so vids And so it's now. just <laughs> amazing, all of it put together. And it, and yes, the, but the fourth one, when you uh, exited from the, the dinosaurs, and kind of like what you were saying about what Epcot was doing, it was showing you, okay, now here's where we are in the world right. in, the, in, in energy. And here are all the different kinds of energies, and here's you know the controversial uh, nuclear power. But then you know there's the possibilities of fission and things yeah. like that, and you you know you could see solar power and how you know that's essentially endless. Yeah, and, and wind power, and wind power and geothermal, and all of that kind of thing. And so you'd be able to see all the different versions of that. And and really for you know the average Joe coming to florida to go to disney world it was a good education oh yeah because they it was were learning edutainment things. yeah well. exactly <laughs> it was entertainment entertaining edu education yeah and things that people may not have realized certainly as kids you know you didn't know all of these different types of things that were out there and it was oh, yeah inspiring. and then on top of all of that they just like the bell systems for spaceship earth they had their own post show which was not within its own location but within the communicore building so if you had gone straight from the exit of that attraction and into the communicore building you would have entered energy exchange which was oh, essentially yes. exxon's post show really for put that that together back yeah. then so, like you saying this is the first time i realized like oh this is the post show yeah but I mean, it, it, you know, you could enjoy it as as on all on its own right. you know, as part of Communicore, or if you were kind of, you know, since they didn't have as much space as they wanted, because they in, they took that giant space that was Universe of Energy and put all of it to the attraction, as then they put it in essentially in the Communicore building, which was right next door. Yeah. Very Not cool. all of them did that. You know, no. Some of them had you know like World of Motion right. had its own. Imagination. But let's actually go to World of Motion because that was at that time when at the opening of the park, the only other attraction that was open I on guess opening so. day. We're going to leave Horizons alone no, no. then? No, no. We'll come back <laughs> because that opened shortly after. All right. But we're going to go to World, World of Motion, Motion page. first because it opened also on October 1st, 1982 with the park. But to me, of all of the, the attractions that are gone, this, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I really, really miss Horizons, and I do. But to me, you know, if you think about it, World of Motion really had it all also. It did. It was a fun ride-through attraction that had a ginormous amount of audio animatronics characters. So many, I think it was over 200, which at that time was the largest display of audio animatronics anywhere on any attraction. Wow. And there were so many different tableaus about the history of transportation, but done in in a comical way. Yeah, each one was funnier. I think a lot of this, or I guess the the beginnings of it, originated from uh, one of the World's Fair attractions, which was the um, the Ford Skyway. Mm. Ironic. Where, yeah, <laughs> it's from Ford, by because you would ride on on Ford automobiles, and then kind of through for some reason, dinosaurs. And so the dinosaurs that were then put into the primeval world at Disneyland that evolved into the ones at Universe of Energy, that whole thing, because they actually had cavemen, too, mm. in that attraction at the World's Fair. And those things got brought into the world of motion. And so if you may remember, as soon as you oh, went yeah. through the roundabout parts on the outside, which was very cool, yes. but as soon as you went in, you would see little footsteps. Yes. Like glowing, yeah. and so you'd enter a cave, and the first thing that you would see would be cavemen blowing their, their feet, feet because they were so tired from all of their walking. And my mother would make a comment every time that that's what her feet <laughs> felt like because, you know, walking through theme parks, you get tired feet, and yeah. it was just like the perfect little display that everyone could relate to i think yeah 
Um, but going back to walking up to world oh, of motion. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We'll, yeah, we'll go back a little bit. Um, it's hard. I mean, every one of these original pavilions was designed so well. Yeah. But I think World of Motion was the most... I mean, just the fact that it's a giant building shaped like a wheel. Yeah, it's, which is, and it yeah. was like a perfect cylinder kind of thing. But then with a wedge right. taken out Yeah. with what? <laughs> well, to see like the little ramp going up. Yeah. And it's not very often with the exception of, you know, like the people mover and stuff that you get to see. Well, I guess there's a lot of rides in Magic Kingdom. But, you know, to see like, oh, that's where I'm going to be in yeah, a minute. Exactly. I'm and that's, not a minute. But, that's you know. a cool thing. Yeah. It was a fun thing. And to when you got up there, of course, seeing people walking around. And they're pointing at you and like thinking, wow, I'm going to be there soon. Yeah. And seeing Spaceship Earth. And then the different perspectives that you would get in the daytime versus nighttime. Yep. It was just such a beautiful And just there would scene. be constant movement because yeah. the these cars never stopped. It would be a an unending sense of movement. And the outside looked so futuristic and this, you know, ramp included. It looked very futuristic. It was like mirrored and when you got in to then see cavemen, you're like, wait, what's going on? So it was kind of like yeah, take you a back cool to the very transition. origins, the the very first origins of men and women moving and, about, and, and that was foot power. Yes, <laughs> and the different scenes that you went through, the different um, like buildings. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, rooms. and that's the thing. Each one of them had a different tableau of of different kind of like a comical sense. Like even just the idea of. Um, okay, the invention of the wheel where it showed people like tr showing the king, hey, I've, I've <laughs> got, got a, a triangle, <laughs> so oh, that's not going to work. I've yeah. got a square closer, but let's keep going. And then this guy who invented the wheel in full circle, like, oh my gosh, he's a genius. He <laughs> wins. Yeah, very the, like Mark Davis style humor. Yes, but I mean, if you think about the, the Ford Skyway attraction, which was narrated by Walt Disney himself, he actually narrated that scene from then. Uh, so it's amazing just to kind of then see it in an Epcot attraction. Yeah. Um, so many favorites. Fr it's funny to me that, like I was saying before, Magic Kingdom really brought like animated features or fantastical stories to life. And even though all of these attractions, there weren't people you knew. There weren't, um, you know, characters with the exception yeah. of Figment and Dreamfinder. But there's so many favorites now oh, among, yeah. you know, diehard Epcot fans of, you know, like the policeman behind the billboard that's going to pull you over. And, and that's the thing about this one. It kind of had the narration where they're talking about the optimism and all of, you know, how perfect yes. transportation can be. And then that the parallel, visual yeah. being... The com Thing kind of the complete wrong. opposite where everything's going wrong. Like it talks about the, you know, the invention of the railroad and how that's going to open up the nation. But then it shows the railroad being stopped by train robbers. And when you as a child make that connection of the narration oh, yeah. versus what you're seeing in front of you <laughs> going terribly wrong, it's like it blows your mind. Like this yeah, is right. amazing. So it really was a cool, cool. And of course, how can we not? talk about the last scene uh, the trans center was that well, the trans center was post the, show. the post show what did they call the mm, you i'm might going have to, to do lose my card I know I've for done not remembering it, it sorry folks we're just gonna center core. Center core. Center core. okay let's pretend we can cut all that part out <laughs> center core was phenomenal because it was very dark at this point and it would kind of go around what was essentially a very weird Glow in the dark, kind of like a black light, futuristic black light, and like little red model, lights. kind of a model city. But you couldn't quite make out exactly what parts of it were buildings or what part. Yeah, but were you could stars. see things moving, yeah, like elevators, movement. cars moving on tracks or whatever, like monorail type situations. But it just gave you an, an overall sense of hope. Yeah. For what the future this is will what become. the future could be. And the music in the background with it. Oh, it was lovely. And then they did the, the Pepper's Ghost effect where you can see yes, yourself we riding in a futuristic car before you would exit yeah. off we the attraction. Always, like, put our arms through the top <laughs> so you could see. Like, but um, yeah, so it was just a fun, fun attraction. Yes. 
And then you would exit into their post show, which was called Trend Center. Yes. Which talked about the whole possible, you know, the futures of of transportation. And they've always had the the part that they have now, even still, where they would show, you know, current yeah, General that was Motors always cars. Fun for me as a that kid would be to at sit the, in a new the very car. End. Yeah, I always enjoyed going to the auto show, and so that was always fun. Uh, but even just the exhibits that they would have before, including the the robot and bird, robot and the bird, talking about you know like kind of a a tiki bird kind of a style bird, talking yeah, about but the showing how robots build cars. how robots help build cars and then there was a whole other show where they would show nine different kinds of engines mm. and like which one is the the best engine which one you know because we've certainly uh used the internal combustion engine but then there were some that were on water power and yes. others on you know different other kinds of power and so there was kind of like a show talking about the the pros and cons of each of those Yes. And then shows that the future car and and it's the lovely lines of it and how mm. you can get some aerodynamics. And then even the lean machine. I don't know if you remember oh, yeah, that. There was a, a fun prototype uh, of a motorcycle kind of a thing where. But it was all enclosed. Yes. Except for the wheels. That would that would kind of evolve with the leaning of the passenger or the the driver, if you will. And which then led into the automobiles at the end where you could <laughs> enter. And then, of course, they had a, a desk from General Motors. And I actually remember a time when you could um, simply fill out a form and they would send you an atlas, huh. which I love atlases. And so <laughs> being able to get a free atlas that was sponsored by a Disney attraction, wow. that was great. Very cool. So, yes. Yeah, so uh, waiting for I me when I got home was a General Motors atlas of, of America. Do you still have that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure Absolutely, you did. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. So, I don't think it was all the time, but it yeah. was uh, one of the times when I was there. They used to have the little metal pin, like buttons that oh, you yeah. could put on your T-shirt collar, right? Mm-hmm. I vaguely remember that. Ah, good times. Ah, yes. Well, and then one year after Epcot opened to the day, they introduced another attraction called Horizons. Hmm. Sponsored by General Electric. Yes. Do you have any thoughts on that, or you just want to go to the other side? I mean, we can skip it. There's not right. too much to say about Horizons, I guess. Wait. No. <laughs> no. Isn't that one of our favorites? It is one of our favorites. And there's many people that like to say, oh, nobody went on Horizons at the end, so that's why it closed. I and tried. now everyone says it's their favorite, but it really was. It was amazing. It was essentially. Imagination <laughs> and Horizons is what I would go back and forth. Oh, yeah. I would go on World of Motion and so also. And the fact that it was all self-encapsulated into one ride. Yeah. You would enter, go through the little queue, get on a vehicle, ride the attraction, and then come And off. again, like a unique, different vehicle that we hadn't seen before. Yes. So it was one that where you essentially are facing out, and everybody kind of goes towards the... You're essentially going sideways, and so seeing whatever's placed in front of you. And then everybody's just kind of moving to the side. But it showed kind of the history of what people thought the future was going to be like. Yes. And then it showed what in the 1950s kind of like what the, yeah. you know, what future or what the f future cities could become. <laughs> and then they showed the modern day stuff with in the form of an Omnimax theater. Ah, yes. You remember that? Where they showed like the space shuttle taking yeah. off or... We you know, always wanted to crystals get crystals forming stopped in that. Like we, oh, we always yeah. wanted the ride to stop because you so wanted to see, see every different film. scene. Yeah, but and yeah. great music going on throughout uh, the whole thing. Yeah, the but music the, was the fun really started when you got to the future. Yeah, right scenes after that, and seeing the family, which the family, which, which a lot of people think is kind of the family from the Carousel of Progress, which was also a General Electric mm -hmm. um, attraction. So kind of them, but in the future. Not yeah. necessarily exactly them, but uh, I'm okay them. with that. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, seeing the different ways and places that you could live mm -hmm. in the future mm. um, was really cool. Oh, and then... Like Mesa Verde. Yes. Ver <laughs> and where else? Under, under the water. Bravo Centauri Bravo was Centauri? the space one. And then... Um, Remember the underwater one? That's the name of it. 
I don't remember, but that's okay. Sea castles, wasn't it? Yes, it was sea castle. That's right. See, I remember things every now and then. Um, and the best part was, of course, you got to choose your ending. Which, you know, majority rules. Yes. And I was just talking about this today on Twitter because I was asking people their favorite. My you know, favorite first memories was of Sea Epcot. Castle. Well, I was just asking, and people were saying that no, they. No, wait. It was desert. Mesa Verde. Yeah, I preferred. That was definitely my top pick was the desert because it was bumpy. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. I remember, but I, most I, people I, seem to pick space. I originally thought space, and so I used to always try to pick space because the idea of being in space seemed more futuristic. Mm. But then trying all the others, I remember thinking, oh, wait, these are very cool too. Um, I used to, I was saying this today on Twitter that because my parents, I would like make them take their own car and I would get my own. So because, you could choose yours. Well, I either wanted to choose my own or I wanted to do a series of experiments and see, to see if you how didn't a tie pick would one, be broken. which would be ah, shown yes. for you. Because I would notice that in rides because it wasn't always crowded all the time. And you'd see empty cars behind you and there would be something playing and I'd be like, what? It was always the same one. Yeah. I believe it did default to space. Yeah. Or was it underwater? I think it was space. Okay. Write in and tell us if we're wrong. <laughs> you can yeah. write us a letter. Um, but I, I'd love to switch it up, but I usually did take the desert. And I forgot to mention this before. I, went, I jumped ahead. But, of course, the most iconic scene, perhaps, in all of Horizons uh, was when you would turn that corner to the desert scene and you would get oh the Oh, my gosh. L'orange. Of l'orange. <laughs> orange blossom scent. And see the uh, little kitty playing in the yep. the fountain there, there the waterfall. There's so many just amazing scenes. Yeah, because it would essentially show this family, uh, you know, kind of a a multi generational family with the, the the mom and dad living out in space, their daughter uh, and her husband living in the desert, you know, doing that, and then Farming. going underwater yeah, to showing your grandson. That's right, and showing the the people with the you know the kid with the seal and mm -hmm. that, and even the little space or sorry the undersea restaurant, which of course yeah, uniquely had that. a single person a, a single person at one of the tables, which was always interesting to me, because <laughs> I always thought I was going to be single. Aw, <laughs> look at you! How so sad. I think there is a place for us, and it's underwater in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> See, these are the things you learn listening to us. And then about. seaweed. Kelp? Seaweed. And it would kind of evolve or dissolve from underwater into the lovely space. Yeah. And, okay. then, and then seeing, and then essentially entering one of the, the space, rotating space cities. Yes. And when they all sang happy birthday at the end with yeah. the holograms, that was oh, fun. All of it was just phenomenal. It was a good time, a everyone. very good time. And, it's and then no it more. ended, yeah, with the pick your own scene. Yeah. But unlike all of the other attractions that had a fun post show, that one did not. After no, you but left you did have vehicle, a song and a, a, a quote. Song. If you can dream it, you can do it. And who said that originally? It sure wasn't Walt Disney. Oh. A lot of people do think that, <laughs> but no, Walt Disney actually never did. I mean, did. there's some controversy even that Tom Fitzgerald... Yeah, I've heard that it was Tom <laughs> Fitzgerald who was the Imagineer behind that, and he's actually uh, the model for the, uh, the... The Beach Boy. The Beach Boy that was in there. But also, I've heard that it was uh, taken from a General Electric executive yeah. at the time. So I've read an article so on So I'm that. not sure exactly, but it was not Walt Disney. Like a lot of people That's the most think. important point to take away. It was not Walt Disney, despite what Hallmark and many, many <laughs> other people will tell you. Um, that's right. And there's a whole song about it. That's right. And it's one of the good ones. Even even though Horizons opened later, they still had the, the same great... Um, music that really flowed well with yes. the rest of the rides. I mean, and from my standpoint, because my first visit was in 84, Horizons was always there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even really know that it, initially that it was not an opening day attraction, but it was in fact one year later. I guess for me too, because I was there in August. Well, I, I guess I did learn that in the Epcot Center book <laughs> because it showed kind of the construction. Uh, and yes. there are pictures even just... Actually, there's two versions of this book. One that's just before opening, where it shows a lot of kind of them getting ready for that, and then mm -hmm. some that are even 
after it opened where he shows some folks or some pictures of the attractions with long lines in front of them. Yeah, and these little pictorial, oh, the pictorial souvenirs, souvenirs that I we both... Did you used to get these or oh, did you get them yeah. after the fact? No, I, I got them. Because every visit, we would they oh, would yeah. come out with a new one every year. And so this one, which was from, I think, I 83, mine. maybe 82. Yep. Um, no. Actually, this is my second version because my... F actually... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I would pour over these so much that they would they would get lost in the binding. Yeah, the so this year, whatever this one was, probably this 82, 80, 83. Um, would have the coming soon thing, which if you're watching us right now, you can see me pointing it out. But if not, you can mm -mm -mm. watch the video to see that. It would have, we're looking forward to the Living Seas, Horizons, that's right. Morocco, and... Tokyo Disneyland was even promoted. In That's that. right. Uh, if you may remember, uh, Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, right after uh, Epcot. It was the next one. So it was very shortly thereafter. So there, Imagineering really had a lot going on because Epcot was such a giant thing. And then also to be building a whole other theme park in a whole other land, Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, yeah, a lot going on. And yes, uh, the Living Seas open in January of 86. We'll get to that other side. I mean, I think we're already running pretty long. We might need to uh, take a break <laughs> after this part. Well, was there anything else you wanted to say about Communicor on this side before there was the Stargate restaurant, oh, yeah, which mean, was my favorite I, you know, I, of the two restaurants at that Because point we, then. my family did not enjoy the full service restaurants <laughs> of, of World Showcase. We I were was living large, staying yeah, at the vacation villas. I didn't know the, the <laughs> pleasures of all of those fun. So Stargate, yeah, was one of my go-to restaurants. Certainly the, the one in the, the Land Pavilion, the one in the American Adventure of the Liberty Inn mm. and then a Stargate were pretty much my, my go-to places because so, they yeah, were the quick None service. of those exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like I said before, I was almost like an only child when we moved to Ocala and we were going all the time. My parents kind of treated me like an adult mm. as far as like dining things and going out. Like we would go see a lot of theater. Even when I still lived in Massachusetts, we were a very artsy family. We were not, sadly. Um, we, I had three <laughs> sisters, and it was pretty much hamburgers and french fries well, and chicken nuggets for us. And my dad was, you know, he came from the restaurant industry, so we we were not to. Every now and then we would, but we were one of the people that got to enjoy the gold, the Gulf Coast room oh. at the Contemporary. You'll have to tell me more. We'll sometime. talk about that at some point <laughs> in time, but we definitely were trying out all the table service ones. So. Must have been nice. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I mean, I'm glad I did because no, I, got to I, I wish I could have from, enjoyed all of that. Yeah. because wh I, as Some we of them had you mentioned, still can. Morocco no, has not changed but much here's the since thing, it opened. Is because, as we were saying, we, yeah, we read these Steve Birnbaum books from cover to cover. I would read all of the descriptions of mm -hmm. each of the restaurants and think, ah, that would be nice. Yeah, I mean, I remember I mean, doing Diamond Horseshoe and Hoop Dee Doo because of reading them in here. Yeah, we definitely did the Hoop Dee Doo, which I think at, at that time was a very fun treat for us. Yeah, but uh, none of the other ones. But that's okay. But um, I read all about them, and they were amazing. Yeah, and you know, Communicore. If we want to touch on that really quick before ending this, See, I don't know that we can do Communicore real quick. Well, but we can touch on it real quick. But I'll need to go back. Okay. I mean, I don't have too much to say about... I, I guess that side, though, has Centorium <laughs> in it. So maybe it sure I does. do have a lot. To, I could do a whole Centorium episode. Honestly, yes. So yeah. we'll we'll wrap it up for now. As you can see, based on the, the geography of the park, we still have a lot to cover. And hopefully this is interesting <laughs> to someone besides <laughs> Scott and I. I think for people that love original Epcot Center they could talk about it all day oh yeah i certainly could talk about it all day just the feelings and the emotions that you get from it i'm and sure you can sense that reliving that in your head us. of walking through and feeling all of those all-encompassing emotions oh that's yes that's why we love epcot center so much and uh we'll continue this soon wow. so we're gonna so this is end <laughs> this now but stay tuned for part two of who Next knows how week. many. Probably can't go past four, right? I don't think we should do four. People would 
be unsubscribing the few subscribers we have at this point in time. But even just the fact <laughs> that we didn't weren't able to finish Future World tells well, me. Well, I knew that would happen because we I have my memories, you have your memories. So it's like really doubling up and then you have That's all true. the technical historical side of things which I'm trying. really we've only barely touched on. We really have. I, um, I've got so much more. But yeah, we'll we will go on and discuss imagination. Oh yeah. That's some the highlights. Land, living seas, you know. Yeah. It's a lot there's a lot to go. On. And then eventually yes, world showcase we will get to as well. There's Hopefully a lot we can there. fit that in and it won't be I a think we'll one, yeah, we'll we'll try to <laughs> but when we get to the American adventure we'll have to we have, we have some things to say about that yeah. too. Whew. So, lot, lot. wrapping up this particular part of the Epcot Center episode of Up the Waterfall. If you are not already, please be sure to subscribe on iTunes or wherever you yes. subscribe to your podcast. You can be alerted to so when a new episode comes out. Exactly. You will be on the edge of your seat wondering when. <laughs> it is every Sunday that we will have an, a new episode. Um, like like us on your podcast And places. comments. We Comment, would love to hear us. any comments. And if you had any questions, we could address those here. Yeah. Tell us what your favorite memories are. Um, you can subscribe and like and watch on YouTube. That's right. Um, you can follow the show on Instagram. I always post a little behind the scenes photo there on Up That's the right. Waterfall Show on Instagram. And I would, of course, recommend the Xanaland website. Yes. Which, I'm probably uh, going to try to get a blog post to correspond with this because there is so much info that we've yes. talked about and I want to give people places to find additional info yes we'll have plenty more um follow us on social media you know all the links will be in the description everywhere just head to xanaland.com to find everything that's right and we hope you enjoyed part one <laughs> of many many epcot center episodes that's right uh thanks for watching we'll be back up the waterfall That is absolutely fantastic. Well, that's only part of it. We got a big climatic scene. But how could you top it? Well, we set the place on fire. And we have our audience trapped down in this flaming city. Now, how can they get out then? Well, now you got into this mess by going down a waterfall. Now, how would you suppose we could get them out of there? By going up the waterfall? That's right. Anything's possible in Disneyland. Oh.